Donald Trump has been indicted in a federal probe over efforts to undo the 2020 election loss and subvert the transfer of power. Joining us live now is the National Affairs columnist at the National Review, John Fun. John, uh, thanks for your time this morning. Uh, it, it is breaking news, so the information is only just coming in to us, but how significant is it? Well, first, it's the... It's the only time we've ever had a former president indicted, so that has historical significance. Secondly, uh, for the political significance, uh, the Republican debate, the first one, will be held August 23rd in three weeks' time. It is possible that Donald Trump, when he decides to appear or not appear in that debate, will be facing indictments and be out on bail in four jurisdictions, New York, Georgia, Washington, and... Um, Florida. Um, yeah. Florida. So that is also unprecedented. There is some evidence that while Trump retains an enormous lead over his Republican rivals, that it's softening. Uh, a poll in June had 50 percent of Republicans saying that uh, Trump had done nothing wrong. That is now down to 40 percent. Uh, an additional uh, number of people say that they support Donald Trump, but that if they believe that he can't win in the November 2024 election because of all of the baggage and the and the burden that he carries legally, uh, they will look at other candidates and perhaps shift their support. So this is potentially very important because we're talking about uh, an enormous uh, burden on a Trump candidacy. His political action committees are now spending almost all of their money on lawyers rather than on television commercials or voter outreach. Right. When it comes to this indictment, though, this and it's only just come in that that he has been indicted over January uh, January six, and and I suppose we all knew this was coming, but now you know the the, the train is in motion. Is, is this the strongest case against him? When it you know when you compare it to Stormy Daniels, when you compare it to Mar-a-Lago, when you compare it to Georgia. Is this the strongest case against him when potentially there's jail time down the track? Well, the New York case, Stormy Daniels, is a junk case. Even liberals are embarrassed that it was brought by a publicity-seeking district attorney. Uh, then you move on to the documents case. I think that's the most important case because there is both video and audio evidence that Donald Trump knew that he had classified documents and that he withheld them. And now we have testimony, apparently, from the people who worked with him uh, at Mar-a-Lago that he asked for camera evidence and for surveillance cameras to be dismantled or censored. So if that is all true, I think that's clearly the most powerful case. This case is certainly important in the case in the terms of issues that it discusses, but there's much less direct evidence mm. and it's a much murkier situation because it involves the political process okay. and how it operates. So, um, so Annalise has just sent me uh, some of the information that's come through the indictment now uh, and basically there are four counts. Uh, one count is conspiracy to defraud the United States. Count two, conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding. Three, obstruction of and attempt to obstruct an official proceeding and four, conspiracy against rights. Uh, so what you're saying is the documents case is still, is still stronger than this one? Well, simply because you're not dealing with just verbal testimony, you're dealing with audio tapes okay. and with videotapes. So to a jury, regardless of where that jury is sitting, that is often the most compelling evidence. Okay. Uh, John, we, we will leave it there. Appreciate your time this morning. We'll uh, we'll talk to you again soon.